What's up, Bernard? You want some uh, fresh straw? Huh? So Bernard's got this whole uh, horse stall, former horse stall, to himself. This is his house. And every winter we, uh, even though they really don't get cold, I mean, we get them. I should, let me let me say that again. I don't know if he actually gets cold, but they uh, are certainly more active when it's cold. And they had a nice thick coat that keeps them warm. So uh, even though they may get cold when it's really, really cold, um, Honestly, I don't think the cold bothers them because they're definitely more active when the winter weather comes around. But anyway, so that's, I get the straw just so they can come out here and hang out. Obviously, if they get wet, they get snowy on them, or we get snow on them. They'll come in here and this is where he can dry off, so. Um, but usually during the winter months, he's, he's out and about, so. Isn't that right, Bernard? Yeah? Based on our experience of owning a Great Pyrenees, wanted to share with you guys reasons you should not get a Great Pyrenees uh, before we decided on getting them. Uh, I did my own research and um, now that we've had them for about four years, since they were puppies, since he was a puppy, then uh, I'm basing this purely off of our experience on uh, why uh, you should not get a Great Pyrenees if you're thinking about getting one. So first reason you should not get a Great Pyrenees is uh, simply because they are big dogs. They are uh, considered a, uh, the giant of uh, the giant breed. Well, they're small, medium, large, and there is giant. Um, now, I've been around him his whole life, and um, the only other dogs I've really been around uh, lately are smaller, medium dogs. And so, uh, Bernard definitely seems big when they're up next to them. Um, and he's probably about, probably about 120 pounds. His dad, from what we were told, was about 140, 150, so that's a pretty good sized dog in my opinion. Um, now it doesn't seem, you know, on the surface that might not seem like a big problem, but obviously if you're limited to space, uh, their size can be an issue. Uh, because of his size, we actually don't take him to the vet, we have the vet come to us. I uh, know I have a pickup truck, but uh, having him in the back of the pickup truck, uh, truck he's still pretty crammed back up uh, in there, in the cab. So. Um, so yeah, just their size alone can be an issue. So if that's something that, uh, you know, once again, they're great dogs, but uh, if you don't have a whole lot of space for a giant dog, do not get a Great Pyrenees. Number two reason to not get a Great Pyrenees uh, kind of goes hand in hand with the first reason, which is their size. Um, they need a lot of space. Uh, now we're on about nine acres, which in my mind is not really a whole lot, um, but that's because they uh, love to roam. They, they love to get out, they love to explore, um, and it's because it's in their nature to protect uh, land and livestock. And so if you don't have a lot of land and space, um, you might want to consider uh, getting one of these guys because a small backyard is probably not going to cut it. Uh, if you live in an apartment, probably not going to cut it unless you uh, have a place to take them that has a ton of land for them to get out and roam. Number three reason to not get a Great Pyrenees, uh, they bark a lot. Um, I'm sure that's all relative uh, when I say they bark a lot, but I've never had a dog that's probably barked as much as him. Um, and that's because it's their job. Their job is to deter uh, and chase off uh, predators. And that's what the barking does is the instant he hears a potential threat or sees a potential threat, uh, all he does is just bark nonstop. And that leads me to the fourth reason why uh, you should not get a Great Pyrenees is because
it's uh, nat by nature they are nocturnal. Uh, they sleep mostly during the day, believe it or not, um, and then uh, unless we're out here. But at night, they're pretty active. He's pretty active. Um, he's constantly walking the perimeter of our property um, and barking. And that barking, when I say it's constant, it is constant because if they just hear something, the slightest sound um, that alerts them to potential threat or danger, uh, he's, he's just barking. Even if it's nothing, even if it's not a big deal, he's just barking. Um, and he'll just walk, walk the perimeter of the property and just bark nonstop. Uh, now, coyotes is a, a big problem for us, and the minute uh, he hears a coyote, um, that's his signal to bark and say, hey, stay away, get away, because I'm, I'm here. Now, it's funny because uh, when we hear police sirens or fire trucks uh, in the back or in the distance, it almost sounds like howling coyotes, and you can see it. You, you can even see it when he hears the sirens in the back. He instantly stops, and you can see his ears pop up because he's wondering if those are those are coyotes and occasionally I will get confu confused um, if those are actually sirens or coyotes as well and, and sometimes I've heard him kind of perk up and then bark for a second because he hears those sirens so uh, so they bark a lot and they'll bark regardless of the time of day mostly for us his barking happens at night so don't get don't get a great Pyrenees if you cannot uh, be in an area where constant barking at night is going to be a problem. Whew. Now even though I'm uh, Kind of hovering around in his shelter I'm, I'm still getting a little cold so i'm gonna try to speed through the rest of these here um another reason uh what is this my fifth reason to not get a great pyrenees they got a lot of fur they shed a lot um in the summer months they definitely thin down uh but in the winter months like right now he's definitely starting to thicken up it's kind of funny because when i give him a bath and he gets all uh wet you can actually see he's actually size wise he's actually not it doesn't look as large doesn't look as intimidating but because of the amount of fur that they have they actually uh do look pretty good size and they, they i mean they are a good size dog but their, their fur definitely adds to it and there is a ton of that fur now i i do the grooming uh but i do a kind of a quick version of it when my wife jumps in and she grooms them uh you can actually see it's almost like a, an animal just died because of how much fur uh, comes off of them so if you are planning on keeping these these guys indoors, now these are purely outdoor dogs for us, uh, but if you plan on keeping a uh, Great Pyrenees indoors, be prepared because there's a ton of fur that these guys shed off when that, that warmer season comes around. Bernard. There's a cat. You don't care? Uh, what is this? Number six reason? Uh, I'm losing count. I'm just going to start uh, naming the reasons why you should not get a great Pyrenees. But another reason you should not get them is because they can be stubborn. Now, I know everybody says that about uh, all different breeds, but when I say stubborn, um, it makes me instantly think of when I try to train them to a, a, an e collar. Now, for the most part, they were perimeter trained ever since they were puppies. So he knows his boundaries and whether or not he has a collar on, whether or not that shock is on, which I will tell you it's, it's not on, it's just, he's just trained to the beep. Uh, by stubborn, I mean we, he could be zapped by that e-collar and it doesn't phase him, doesn't phase him one bit. Um, he, you know, they, they know what they want and they'll do it, uh, they'll do whatever it takes to get it. Um, it can, you know, once again, they're, they're trained to, or they're, they, they're bred to, go after you know, predators, coyotes, uh, ward off predators and wildlife, and they'll do what it takes. And so if that means they'll ignore anything and everything else, even if something that, uh, like a shock to stop them, it's, it's not gonna stop them. And I speak from experience. Um, they are stubborn dogs for that reason. So if you want a dog that's, that's gonna listen to you um, all the time, don't get a great Pyrenees. Now, for the most part, he is pretty good about, um, you know, like if I tell him to, to, to stay and there's no presence of coyote or anything that's enticing him to do his job, he's a great dog. He's a great listener. But when it comes down to uh, him doing um, something that he's not supposed to do, if it's in his nature to do it, good luck. He's, he's going to do what he's been bred to do. So they can be stubborn dogs for that reason. Uh, another reason not to get a great Pyrenees is if you're wanting a guard dog to um, 
keep human predators away, don't get a Great Pyrenees. Now their size, they can be intimidating because of their size, because of their bark. But from our experience, uh, they are the friendliest dogs uh, when it comes to um, human, humans. Um, uh, humans, what am I trying to say? Well, <clears throat> we have no issues with our delivery drivers, with the postal carriers uh, coming up to our house. Now, because of their size, the, you know, they occasionally the, the drivers can be intimidated, but for the most part, uh, Bernard, he just approaches them, no problem. He never really barks at, at people. Um, now, I'm sure there are great Pyrenees out there that will, um, but based on our experience and ever since we've had him as a puppy, he's never shown any sort of aggression towards any humans um, that have visited us. So, you know, friends, family come over. I really have no concerns about uh, him uh, approaching strangers. So from the beginning, I, I never really considered getting him to protect uh, us per se from other humans. Uh, his job was really just to keep predators, uh, animal predators away. But if you need a good guard dog to protect your house, I probably wouldn't get a Great Pyrenees. I'd probably stick to getting a German Shepherd uh, or a Rottweiler or one of those dogs that are really more bred to protect humans and are, are great at guard dogs. Now, I, you know, I'm sure there are German Shepherds out there that don't do a good job of it, but I speak from experience because I used to have a German Shepherd and that was also a very, that from my experience was a great uh, guard dog for the house. Great Pyrenees, not so much. They're great at protecting your, uh, your land and, your, your, and keeping wildlife away. Probably not the best at keeping human predators away. So don't get a great Pyrenees if you're looking for a guard dog for the house. Great for guard dog for the farm though. Okay, another reason to not get a great Pyrenees. Uh, if you have a nice yard and you're trying to keep that yard looking nice, uh, don't get him or at least uh, don't get Great Pyrenees and allow them to do whatever they want because they will dig. Uh, we have um, uh, voles in the area, moles, gophers, whatever they are that are underground and the minute he gets a scent of it, uh, he's going digging and he'll dig holes wherever and whatever to go after those uh, moles or voles or what are we, whatever we got. So if you're trying to keep a nice looking yard, don't get a Great Pyrenees because they will dig and there's no stopping them. Uh, let's see, what's another reason to not get a Great Pyrenees? Um, look at him, you see him putting his paw on me? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's funny because when, uh, before I got, um, before we got the Great Pyrenees, I read a lot of mixed things about um, whether you should really treat him as a pet or treat him as a farm animal and just not have a whole lot of interaction with them. And you know, truth be told, he's, he's, uh, he's part of the family, he's, he's a pet to us, but I also do look at him as, as kind of an employee uh, on our land. Uh, he's got a job to do, and I tell my, my wife and kids that every animal on our little farm, little homestead, they all have a job to do. They all gotta, they all gotta do something, and that's, that's, that includes all of us humans. And so for him, um, his job is really just to protect uh, the land, keep the animals, the predators, the coyotes away. Before we got them, we did have coyotes coming up right to our house. Um, and ever since we've had them, uh, we've really not had any of those issues. Uh, and I can tell you, since we've had a containment in the back area of our property, um, for that reason, we, do, we did start to get wildlife coming up to the house again. Um, but because of his presence, uh, his job, uh, just his job is to keep the animals away, the, the wildlife away, and so he does do that. So if you're, uh, if you're not gonna have a job for the Great Pyrenees, um, be prepared because if they get bored, they will go out there and, and look for a job. Um, kinda wish my kids were like that, but it's not the case. So yeah, if you're uh, not gonna have a job for the Great Pyrenees, uh, don't get one because this is not a lap dog, uh, it's not a toy dog. Um, I'm sure those dogs are fun to have, but those dogs are not for me. The reason I like uh, Bernard and the Great Pyrenees is because they were bred to have a job and they do their job really well. So don't get a Great Pyrenees if you're not going to give them a job to do. Yeah, I'm not just tempting. <laughs> you're just so cute. You're just so cute.
He's gonna buck you off. <laughs> He's gonna squish you, you better watch out. Okay, this might be uh, the last thing I can think of because my, my, my brain's starting to freeze out here in the cold and I'm probably starting to slur my words a bit, but the, the final reason why you should probably not get a great Pyrenees is because you don't want a family dog. Um, Bernard is excellent with, with the family, with the kids. Um, you know, he wasn't, we didn't really get him for that reason, but we've just noticed that he, um, he really takes this kind of protective nature of his to the kids. Uh, and I, and I, I visually have seen that, you know, when my kids are out now, he does it with me when I'm out, when it's just me, uh, you know, walking the property, he's for the most part, always by my side. Um, and I, I, I kind of feel like that's, uh, that's his nature is, is he's protecting, you know, um, he's protecting me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just what I think. I don't know. But I will tell you, I see it when he's around my kids, um, when he's around the kids, um, he's constantly just kind of hovering around them. And initially you might think, oh, well, he just wants their attention. Like he's kind of doing now. Um, no, I can tell you the difference when he wants attention versus when he's actually standing and kind of getting between, for example, I'll give you a good example. When the kids are in the front yard of our house, um, not close to the street, but when they're kind of mid yard towards the street, I have noticed where he'll get in between the street and my kids as my kids are walking. I can't explain it. I can't tell you why or how he knows, but uh, that's what he does. And so if you don't want a dog that's good with, with kids or family, don't get a Great Pyrenees because these guys are, at least our dog is, our Great Pyrenees is really good with the family and with the kids. Um, I've never really had any concerns, never had any concerns actually with with him harming us or the kids with the exception of his size um when my kids were smaller now my kids are still smaller younger um because of their size sometimes i will say that when they're playing um they don't know their size especially when they're puppies because they are big puppies uh their size can potentially injure your kids or knock them over um because they simply don't know that they're a big dog relative to how small your kid may be so that's it um i don't know how many reasons i just listed there but even though i've got these nice warm gloves on these gloves are not warm anymore i'm getting cold and i just wanted to make this video to kind of share some feedback on our experience of having the great pyrenees um i'm sure i've missed some reasons uh if you guys have anything more to add to it uh feel free to comment below but those are the top eight, nine, 10, whatever number I listed uh, reasons why you should not get a great Pyrenees. 